Hello, in this video, I'm going to talk about functional anatomy of pectoralis major. Um, so first, I want to go through just some basic anatomy of the muscle, and then I'm going to talk about incline versus decline bench and bench press versus chest flies. Um, so the origin of pectoralis major, uh, we have two heads. Sometimes you'll see this divided into three, but most commonly you'll see the clavicular head or the upper fibers. Uh, those are the ones here that originate on the medial half of the clavicle. And then the sternocostal head, sternal meaning sternum, costal meaning ribs, uh, that constitutes the middle and lower fibers of the muscle. Um, so they're originating on the sternum and the cartilage of the first through six ribs, hence their name. You will sometimes see those, uh, the sternocostal head divided into the sternal head and the costal head. So then we would have three in that case, but more commonly you're going to see it this way. Uh, then collectively, they all insert on the humerus at the crest of the greater tubercle. So it's the anterior portion of the humerus. So all fibers collectively will contribute to adduction, medial rotation, and horizontal adduction of the glenohumeral joint. Um, the clavicular head, so these upper fibers up here, also will flex the glenohumeral joint, similar to how the anterior deltoid also flexes the glenohumeral joint. Um, so these are just neighboring fibers that rel that have a, a similar line of pull or angle on that joint can, uh, that is very similar to anterior deltoid, which is why it also flexes. Then the sternocostal head, so the middle and lower fibers, will also extend the glenohumeral joint because the fibers are going in the opposite direction as the fibers of the clavicular head. Therefore, they can have the opposite action at the same joint. All right, so incline versus decline bench. So if we're on a flat bench, then we're working all fibers kind of evenly. If we want to target the clavicular head, so the upper fibers, then we want to do an incline bench. So think of an incline bench as sort of being somewhere between a shoulder press, so a frontal plane straight up in the air, shoulder press compared, and so it's kind of somewhere between that and a flat bench. Um, so as we mentioned on the previous slide, um, the clavicular fibers are going to flex the shoulder and they're pretty closely related and similar to the actions of anterior deltoid. So it makes sense that if we change the line of force relative to how the joint is moving, um, that if it's more similar to like a shoulder press, that we would be targeting the clavicular fibers and also anterior deltoid in that case. Compared to a decline bench, where we're this way and the line of pull or the line of force in that example is always down if the resistance is gravity, really. It's the weight of whatever weights that you're pushing. The line of force is always in the downward direction. So if you're changing your the orientation of your body relative um, so that we're in a decline bench, then you're going to target the lower fiber. So that's going to be the sternocostal head and especially the costal head, if we were to divide those into two. So the lower fibers, especially. Now, if we compare a bench press, like a flat bench versus a chest fly. Um, so same thing, if we do incline and decline, then we're still, again, going to target um, the upper or lower fibers, just like I just discussed. But now if we look at a chest press versus a chest fly, they are going to target different portions of the muscle. Um, they are not equivalent. So somebody who does a lot of chest flies, it's not necessarily going to make you stronger at chest press and vice versa. Uh, think about the law of specificity. So we get better at doing the thing that we are specifically doing and doing that thing doesn't necessarily make you better at something else. And so this is a good example of that. Um, so when we are doing a chest press and we're pushing up, the center of mass of the weight that we're pushing is going to stay pretty centered on top of the body, which means that we're targeting more of the belly of the muscle. When we do a chest fly, now the center of mass of the resistance is outside of our body. So as we're going down in the fly or the arms are coming out in the fly in horizontal abduction, 
um, the center of mass of the weight is coming out. And so that is going to target more towards the insertion of the muscle. So the further away the weights get from your body, the further laterally you are working pec major. The more the weights come in towards the body, the more medially you are working on pec major. Now, if you're using dumbbells, like we see in this picture or over here in this picture, if we're using dumbbells, then we're getting a lot of resistance when we're all the way open and it's primarily going to target at near the insertion. And then as we come in, we're getting less and less um, resistance. We're getting less and less um, because in that case, the, the gravity is still going in the downward direction, but we're moving not opposite the line of pull of gravity, essentially. Um, so if we look in this picture and you see that they're doing cable flies, in that case, now the line of pull is coming from the cables. And so we're going to maintain that resistance all the way through. So in that case, if we're doing a cable fly like that, then when we're all the way open, we're going to be targeting more towards the insertion. And then as we're bringing the arms closer and closer until that resistance is lined up on top of the center of the muscle, then we're targeting more of the belly of the muscle. So with a cable fly, we're going from insertion focus to belly of the muscle focus, insertion, belly of the muscle. If it's a dumbbell fly, we're going from insertion focus to not really much resistance, insertion focus to not really much resistance compared to a chest press where you're really targeting the belly of the muscle the entire time. All right. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you have a great day.